Okay, let's move on. So let's look at some more concepts about vectors. Uh, so here I'm creating a vector, x is c12. Now incidentally, just to jump back and within R, uh, you see all the code here. This is the code for the previous slide. Here's the code for the code for this particular slide and so on, right? So it's all available. And what I would strongly suggest is, uh, even though my video just continues, pause the video, get back into the code. So for example, here you've got x is c12. Copy it and then create a new source file here, file, uh, new file, R script, right? So paste the command here and make some changes. Okay, something like this and try it out. And then see here, okay, you've got X is this. Now see what is the value of X, it's showing you this, right? Or you could just come down here and type X, see the value and then see, oh, okay, multiple values, duplicate values are indeed allowed. So those kinds of things, right? This is what I mean by saying, don't just run my code, periodically stop the lecture and uh, explore the code on your own. And don't be afraid to make a mistake. So for example, I had told you earlier that uh, vectors are homogeneous in the sense all the elements have to be of the same type. Well, how about I try, is that really true? Okay, so I try to create a vector uh, and I say C and I put the number 23 and then I put let's say the string SHU uh, and uh, let's say uh, let's say I put a number decimal number 4.5 let's see what happens when I try to run this line of code okay uh, so it, it actually ran this line of code let's see what value is contained and why oh boy it really works but look what happened did it really work Look carefully at the result. It actually didn't work, right? Because what it did was it said, okay, there's a string, there are numbers. It simply created all of them as strings, which is very different, right? The first element of this vector is not the number 23. It's the string 23, right? So for example, how do I know? Will it still work correctly? Will it treat it as a number if required? Let's try. Let's see. Uh, what happened is, let's say I do y of 1, which is supposedly 23, plus 5. Okay. So let's see what happens when I run this line of code. You get an error message. Non-numeric argument to binary operator. So the binary operator is plus. That's what it means, binary operator. And it says you gave it a non-numeric argument. Yes, we did. Because the first argument is not the number 23, it is actually the string 23 that we gave. Obviously, it doesn't know how to add the string 23 with the number 5. Okay, so that's what we mean by uh, uh, vectors are homogeneous. All the elements have to be of the same type. In this case, uh, R didn't complain, but silently, behind the scenes, it converted the numbers into strings. Okay, because when you executed the line of code, you didn't get an error message, so it looked like, oh, it worked. But when you went into it, you found that it actually doesn't work. This is what I mean by exploring the line of code. In fact, to tell you the truth, uh, this is something I did not know. I thought that if I tried this, I would get an error message, right? I had never had to try this before uh, because I knew that it's homogeneous. I never tried to create something that was not homogeneous. But uh, when I played around, I learned something new, okay? I learned the fact that R just coerces everything to be of the same type. That's what I mean by saying, don't just run my code, but try to play around with it, okay? And believe me, uh, if you're taking the analytics certificate, you know, if you're doing this course, it's very, very likely that in your work environment, you're going to use your R skills. And the deeper you learn it, the better it is for you. Okay, so back to the slides, okay. So I created a vector called uh, uh, X, put in the values one and two into that vector. I created another vector called y, put in the values 3, 4, 5. And now I'm creating a new vector and I'm calling it, uh, of course, I'm not assigning the value to anything. I'm just creating this vector, but I'm saying put together the values in the vectors x and y. So the result is a new vector that contains the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so you can do that. You can take existing vectors and concatenate them together. Okay. Now you may say, well, where is this new vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? 
we didn't store the result in any variable. We just said cxy. So it created the new vector and simply displayed it. Okay? We didn't store it in any variable. Now think about what you would have need to, needed to have done if you wanted to store this new vector somewhere in a new variable, let's say z. So then you would have had to say z is assigned c x comma y. Okay, that's what you would need to have done. Okay, so we have seen how we can concatenate two existing vectors into a new vector. Let's see what else we can do. So here I'm creating a vector with the values 1, 2. And here I'm creating a new vector by saying x comma 100 comma x. So obviously the result is going to be First, it's going to put the contents of the vector x, which is 1, 2. Then it's going to put 100, and then again put 1, 2. So what you're going to get is this. 1, 2, 100, 1, 2. Right? So again, this is showing you that uh, when you're concatenating vectors, you can have the same vector coming in many times. So not only are duplicates elements allowed, you can also concatenate the same existing vector many times. Again, once again, we're not storing the results anywhere. So uh, it's just being displayed. The object is created and it's being displayed. Okay, so let's look at strings. Uh, strings again are variables which you put within double quotes or single quotes. So here I'm creating a variable called x, an object called x, into which I'm putting the string Sean, and uh, another object called y, into which I'm putting the string pen. Okay, now in order to find out how many characters a, a string has, you can say n char and you give the name of the string and it will tell you how many characters the string has. And of course it tells you that there are four characters in the string and I'm showing you the output of the commands uh, as a comment, right? Just so that uh, I can include the outputs in my uh, R code and when you execute it, nothing bad happens because otherwise this is not a valid R command. So if you try to run this command, it would be a mistake. But then when I made it a comment, it doesn't matter. It just treats it as a comment. It doesn't even try to execute it, okay? Uh, I can combine the two uh, strings by using the function paste. Okay, paste is an existing R function. So when I say paste x comma y, it's going to put Sean and Pen. Uh, but the paste function has the property that by default, it puts a space between uh, the two objects that you're pasting together. Right, so I just said paste x comma y. Uh, normally, it should have just been Sean Pen without any space in between, but the paste function automatically puts in a space. Now, if you don't want it, you can say, uh, if you want a different separator, you can put a comma. So in this case, I'm saying paste y comma x, right? But that means pen, Sean. But this time after the y, I want a comma. So I'm saying separator equals comma space. Okay, rather than just the default separator being space, I'm saying I want a comma followed by a space. So obviously the result is going to be pen comma Sean. Just some functions that will come in handy uh, later on in the course. Okay, now suppose you don't want any separator, you can always say separator equals uh, double quote, double quote with nothing in between. There's no space in between. So obviously in this case, there won't be any space. We are now going to look at one very important aspect of R, which is how it performs what are called as vectorized operations. Let's go uh, into it now. Okay, so I've uh, again created a vector called prices, which has the values 5, 10, and 15, three prices. Again, I created the vector using the C function, which is short for concatenate, right? So you call the C function and pass whatever uh, items you want to go into the vector, and it becomes C5, you know, it becomes a vector with those items. I have created another vector called quantities and I've put the values 1, 2, 4 in them. These two have the same number of elements. So now I'm creating another vector called amounts. Uh, and of course, you know, this is you bought three items uh, and these are the quantities of each of them you bought. So what is the total amount that you spent? In order to find that, obviously, you have to multiply uh, 5 by 1, 10 by 2, 15 by 4. Right? So those are the amounts that you have to pay for each of those individual items. So to find the amounts, I have to multiply each of these items by uh, each of the corresponding items in the other vector. Uh, those who are used to programming in traditional languages would know that you have to now set up a loop and then go through the items one by one and then multiply each of them correspondingly. Now with vectorized operations in R, 
you don't have to do that. So I can simply say prices times quantities and R will automatically do uh, element wise multiplication. Right. So if you did that the result is going to be 5 a new vector with the values uh, 5, 20 and 60. Okay. So 5 being 5 times 1, 20 being 10 times 2 and 60 being 15 times 4. So this is what is called as a vectorized operation in the sense that you can take vectors and operate on entire vectors without having to indicate the individual items of those vectors. It's a big convenience. Uh, it used to be back in time that vectorized operations were a lot more efficient in terms of time consumption than corresponding operations which you did uh, element by element. You know, you uh, in, uh, manually went through the elements one by one and did it. Uh, but nowadays, the efficiency factor is not really uh, important. It's, it's not true, in fact. Uh, but again, the convenience and the succinctness of how you state things, that uh, is a big advantage. And wherever possible, we should try to exploit vectorized operations. Okay, so let's look at some more in vectorized operations. So here I've got a vector. And the beauty here is I'm taking a vector, which is weights, which has five elements in it, and multiplying it by two. And two is what is referred to as a scalar quantity in the sense that it's a, a single quantity. It does, it's not a vector. It doesn't have multiple values. And yet, R is perfectly capable of doing something meaningful with this. Right. So what it's going to do is it's going to treat this two as if it's a vector with five elements. OK, and then it's going to do a regular vector multiplication. So what will happen is that every element of this vector will get multiplied by two and you'll get this result. OK, so that's another convenience. You can mix vectors and scalars uh, quite casually and R does the right things. So these are all conveniences that you have. So another example, this time you've got two vectors. 5, 10, 15, 20, that's the first vector, has got four elements. The second vector has got only two elements. And yet, you can do the operation, the vectorized operation on this. What R is going to do is, just like it did with the scalar 2, what it's going to do is it's going to take this thing, it says, oh, this has only two elements, I need four elements. So it's going to simply repeat the elements. So it's going to treat it as if it's a vector with 1, 2, 1, 2. And then it's going to do the multiplication, right? So this is what R calls as recycling. It recycles the second vector uh, uh, as many times as needed to make it the same size as the first vector. Not the second and the first. It recycles the smaller vector as many times as needed to make it equal in size to the larger vector. And then it performs a regular vector operation. Uh, uh, I have to admit that this is something we will not be using too often. Uh, but the reason I'm pointing it out is that, uh, you know, as a data scientist, as a person who's working with data and with R, you will come across R code uh, that's written in other places. You know, people, others may write R code or when you're reading a book to enhance your knowledge, you'll come across code like this. And at that time, you need to be able to make sense of what's going on. So I'm covering some features that we actually will not use in this course, but you need to know uh, to, to use uh, R properly. Okay, some more on vectorized operations. Uh, I'm just showing you here that vectorized operations work not only on numbers, they can also work on strings. So here I have two vectors uh, of strings, uh, first names and last names, and I can combine these by using the paste function that we've already looked at. Earlier when we used the paste function, we, pa we used it only to refer to individual strings. This time we are giving it strings of uh, vectors of strings, and it's still going to do the same paste operation on uh, pairwise. Okay, so you're going to get uh, Jenna Lee and Chris Mason and Jason Masters and uh, Zuan Sheng. That's what you're going to get. Okay, and of course, paste we know that by default it puts a space. We didn't indicate what the separator is, so it put a space by default. Okay, so vectorized operations work just as well with vectors of strings as they do with vectors of numbers. Okay. Now one more example, this time just to clarify. So here you have two vectors, the first vector, the smaller vector having two elements and the larger vector having five elements, right? Earlier we had said that when you've got two vectors, you're performing a vectorized operation and one vector is smaller than the other, then R automatically scales up the first vector, repeats it or recycles it as many times as needed to make it equal to the larger vector. Okay, now in the earlier example that we did, the larger vector size was a nice multiple of the smaller vector size, right? You had 
two elements in the smaller vector and four elements, that's what you had earlier in the larger vector. So it was able to replicate the first one twice and then both of them matched. Now here, this is not a proper multiple, right? So this is the first, the smaller vector is two elements and the larger vector is five elements. So there's no easy way for it to just replicate this an integral number of times to get this size, right? R will still do the job, but it'll give you a warning, right? So if you do X star Y, it's going to do the job. So it's going to do one, two, and then repeat one, two, and then just repeat the one because they, you know, there are only five elements. And then it will perform the operation. So you're going to get 10 times one, 20 times two, uh, 30 times one, 40 times two, and then 50 times one. So that's what you get. But R is thinking that this is possibly not what you intended. So it gives you a warning message, right? The longer object length is not a multiple of the shorter object length. So if you see this message, then you know what you did. And that's, that's how it works.